Another day, another tunnel discovery, this time below Gaza City. It's all very high-tech, almost like an underground settlement. This tunnel was apparently used by senior Hamas leaders, including Yahya Sinwar. He's Israel's enemy number one. Sinwar plotted the October 7th attack. He is also the top Hamas leader still in Gaza. The rest are chilling in Doha. So, so Israel is hunting this man. They've destroyed his house. They've targeted his hideouts. And now they've found this tunnel. It's almost 60 feet below the ground. It's got elevators, stairs, and electricity shafts, even food and water storage. Take a look. <laughs> No sinwar though. He's evaded the IDF multiple times. Reports say he's still in the city of Khan Yunus, possibly in the tunnels. But every time Israel gets close, he escapes. Again, possibly through the tunnels. It's all interconnected, you see. Hamas claims the network is 500 kilometers long. Now, to put that in context, Gaza is only 41 kilometers long and around 10 kilometers wide. Imagine building a 500 kilometer network in this area. Plus, it's very sophisticated. Some tunnels have concrete walls. They're wide enough to hold cars. You have electricity, water, and telephone lines, which raises the question, how did Hamas build all of this? Well, the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, have an answer. Every month, building materials enter Gaza. Most of it is aid sent by Qatar or Egypt. It is meant for civil projects like building houses or hospitals. But Israel says Hamas diverts these materials. They use them to build tunnels. The IDF also has some calculations to offer. One tunnel, they say, uses around 350 truckloads of material. Total cost, around $3 million. Of course, these are all Israeli claims, and we cannot confirm these numbers. But where did this idea come from? Why did Hamas start digging tunnels in the first place? Well, the tunnels are actually very old. They predate them. Hamas was founded in 1987. The tunnels are much older. You see, Gaza's soil is rich in clay, meaning you can dig through it easily. And once dug, the tunnels do not need support. It's been the case throughout history. In 332 BC, Alexander the Great laid siege to Gaza. It took him 100 days to win. And guess how he did it? By digging tunnels into the city. So the soil has always been suited to tunnels. But why did modern Gazans bother to dig? Because after the 1967 war, Israel occupied Gaza. You couldn't leave the strip easily. So Gazans began to dig. Most of these tunnels opened into Egypt. They were used to smuggle goods, fuel, and people. Then in 2005, Israel withdrew. Two years later, Hamas took control of Gaza, yet the tunnels were still being dug. Not for, for smuggling, though. These tunnels had military use then. In 2006, Hamas used them to capture an Israeli soldier. They held him for five years. Later, the IDF exchanged him for more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. One soldier. Guess who was among them? Yahya Sinwar. So Sinwar and tunnels have a long history. One that could also end in the same tunnels. But Yahya Sinwar is not Israel's only goal. They also need to free their hostages. Some 129 hostages still remain in Gaza. Their fate depends on the true stalks in Egypt. Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh traveled to Cairo on Wednesday. He was offered a deal. One week of no fighting. That's what he was offered. In return, Hamas should release 40 hostages. Reports say he's rejected the offer. 
Hamas will not release hostages without a ceasefire, and that's a non-starter for Israel. So no one's expecting a miracle. U.S. President Joe Biden says a deal will take time. Are we expecting a hostage deal anytime soon? We're pushing it. We, I, I don't, there's no expectation at this point, but we are pushing. But does Gaza have time? The death toll has crossed 20,000. Around 8,000 of them are children. Only a truce or a UN Security Council resolution can stop Israel. The first one looks far away. That is the truce. What about the UNSC? Well, the vote was supposed to happen on Monday. It's been delayed three times. The US is concerned about the wording of the document. If they don't like it, they will veto it. So the UNSC members are working overtime. They will try to vote again today. It won't be easy, though. The U.S. is trying to resolve differences bilaterally, not drag things to the UNSC. But Israel is defiant. Prime Minister Netanyahu says Hamas has two options, death or surrender. It's clear that the conflict will move and needs to move to a lower intensity phase. Um, and we expect to see uh, and want to see uh, a shift to more targeted uh, operations uh, with a smaller number of forces uh, that's really focused in on dealing with the, the leadership uh, of Hamas, uh, the tunnel network, and a few other critical things. Whoever thinks that we will stop is detached from reality. We will not stop the fighting until all of the goals that we have set are achieved. All Hamas terrorists, from the first to the last, are dead men walking. They only have two possibilities, surrender or die. And time is key here. Israel will keep hunting for Yahya Sinbar. Hamas will keep trying to keep him safe and caught in the middle are innocent Gazan civilians.